Welcome back everyone to more NASCAR Heat 2 coverage here at Knee Pit Gaming. So today's video is all about Phoenix. Phoenix is a great track, a lot of fun to drive. We're going to be talking about some approaches to the track as far as how do you get into the corners and off these corners. We're also going to be talking about some lap times, the AI, and then of course we'll be taking a look at setups for each of the three series, the trucks, Xfinity, and the Monster Energy Cup cars. And then, as we always do with these setup videos, we'll finish up with some gameplay footage. Today's footage is going to be from the Cup cars at Phoenix. It's a short, roughly 20 or 22 lap race. So without further ado, let's head to the track. Before we take a look at the setup itself, let's start off by taking a look at, at Phoenix overall. Phoenix is a wide track, lots of room to race, lots of grooves to run into the corners. But a couple of areas that I want you to pay close attention to when driving. Number one is corner number one, and particularly the entry. Make sure you get off the gas and onto the brakes early. There are some bumps going into this corner. So if you really try to brake really late, they can and will disrupt the car, can shoot you up the racetrack into other cars. So that's definitely not a deal that we want. So make sure you get off the gas early, onto the brakes early, and get the car to the bottom, right around the yellow line or even below in some cases, uh, particularly against the AI. They will give you the bottom groove a lot of times. So you want to make sure you get the car to the bottom, get the car rotated, and then get back on the gas as early as possible. Uh, if you're running against the AI, the AI will get back to the gas very early off of turn two. So you're going to have to work on carrying a lot of speed off of turn two, which gets you down the back straightaway with the kink in there. Also, keep in mind that whenever you're going down uh, the back straightaway, you can cut through the kink. You don't have to necessarily uh, run it traditionally above the yellow line. You can uh, chop off part of the track on the back straightaway and not have to worry about it. The next spot that I want you to focus on is the entry to turn three. Again, here, there's a couple of ways of doing it. They're not really the bumps to worry about. So you can drive it in really as deep as you want. I generally like to lift off the gas uh, between the first and the second brake marker. Uh, and again, in the gameplay footage, you'll see and get an idea of, of where I'm getting on and off the gas. Exactly where I get on and off the gas around this track depends on really what series I'm in. The cup cars, I like to get off the gas and onto the brakes a little bit earlier because I'm carrying more speed. And I want to make sure that I let the car rotate and really get a good... Uh, set with the front tires so that I can drive aggressively off the corner and carry the most speed down the straightaway because that's where I'm going to make the passes from the center of the corner to the entry of the next corner. So with that in mind, let's talk a little bit about lap times. Lap times at this track are, for the truck series, you're looking at somewhere around a 28 second flat or 28.1 second lap. Xfinity cars, somewhere around 27.4, 27.5, somewhere in that range. And for the cup cars, somewhere around 26.8, 26.9 second laps. Now, I'm under no illusion that those lap times are the quickest that you're ever going to find. This is not one of my best tracks, uh, but I can tell you that the setup that you're looking at and the, those lap times will definitely uh, get you a long way against the AI on maximum difficulty. So that shouldn't be an issue. But as always, I recommend you to take the setup as sort of a baseline and then work uh, to make it feel right for you. Let's go ahead and talk about the setup itself. Now, you notice that we're already in the cup car, and that is because like most of the tracks, it seems like you can run the same or very similar setups in all three series. So first we're going to talk about the cup setup and then I'll let you know a few things that I like to do in the lower series to maybe help the car to be a little bit better uh, for in those conditions. First of all, the shock settings is the same across all three. I use fives across the board. Uh, this isn't all that big a deal, assuming that you get turn one right on the entry. Again, if you try to d drive it in too deep into turn one, then the car can start hopping all over the place. Um, but if you get off the gas early and onto the brakes early and get the thing slowed down and get to the bottom, it shouldn't be an issue. So the fives really are more for just in case I drive it in a little bit too deep, but it's not going to save you if you drive it in way too deep. Weight settings, left weight is maxed out. All the weight we can get to the left side of the car that is allowed. Front weight or nose weight, 50.5%. This is to help the car to rotate 
but also to keep it stable under rotation so that we don't get the car too loose and scrub off too much speed. Wedge is at 51.0%, and the front and rear ride heights are at the minimum. Next, we move over to the spring settings, 1,100 and 1,200 pounds, respectively. And the reason for this is I want the car to rotate, but using that stiffer right front spring really helps to stabilize the car so that I can be aggressive with it overall, not just on corner entry, but also on corner exit without the car getting too loose. It's sort of like having a bigger spring is something that I can lean on uh, on the car and loosen up some other parts of the setup and not have to worry about getting too loose. So if you want to loosen up the setup a little bit, particularly on entry, then increase the left front spring or and or lower the right front spring. Now in the rear of the car, you can see there's quite a bit of split here. Uh, actually, it might be the most split I've run at any track so far in the rear, and that's uh, 250 pounds of rear spring split. Now the more rear spring split you run, the looser the car will be, particularly on the throttle, so that center of the corner off. Uh, and in fact, you might even play around with using a little bit more rear spring split. And that is simply because, uh, particularly off of turn two, you want to be as aggressive with the throttle and get into the throttle as early and as often and as much as you possibly can uh, to get as much speed as you can. And to, in order to do that, you're really going to need the car to rotate well. But again, if you're getting too loose under throttle, then narrow this gap a little bit. Maybe try increasing the left rear spring or possibly reducing the right rear spring. Either one of those or both will help you out. Uh, tire pressure settings. These are the ones that I've started with to approximate proper inflation, but by all means, uh, play around with this. If you want the car to rotate more, then simply increase the, sp the split between the left sides and the right sides. Here you can see that I'm somewhere around four to five pounds uh, increase that to about 10 pounds and see if, if you feel the difference and the car should be rotating even better for you. Moving over to the miscellaneous settings, left and right front cambers maxed out as always. Again, that is simply uh, to, even though it's probably pretty unrealistic in, uh, in real terms, then in the game, it gives you a lot more grip through the corners and helps the car to rotate and there are really no negative consequences to doing so. So that's why I use it. Front sway bar is at 1.15 inches. The lower you get this number, uh, the better that the car wants to rotate, particularly on entry to the corner. So keep that in mind. If you want to tighten the car up overall, then feel free to increase the front sway bar number. Didn't use the rear sway bar in this case, as I generally don't. Uh, it's just not one of the adjustments that I'm used to using, so I, I usually stay away from it. Uh, but feel free to try this if you need to help the car rotate, particularly in uh, the center of the corner off in the rear, then by all means, try using the rear sway bar and the larger should help the car uh, to rotate more. The track bar is a small amount of difference, only a half inch difference, 10 inches on the left side and 10 and a half inches on the right side. Uh, feel free to increase this, particularly if you need help from the center of the corner off, getting the car to rotate as this can really help you out. Uh, brake bias is something that you'll want to play around with and the setting you finally settle on will depend on how you like to brake. If you like to brake really hard, really quickly, and use the, the, ga the gas pedal, and in this case, the brake pedal more as an on-off switch, where you're either completely on the brakes or completely off, then you might want to set this a little bit higher, up around 75, 76 or so. Uh, if you tend to ease onto the brakes uh, and apply more pressure over time, then you might be able to lower this a lower number here can move more brake to the rear of the car, which will help the car to rotate under braking. The more you move to the front will simply help the car to be more stable and want to go straighter while you're braking. So keep that in mind. Uh, grill tape, I didn't mess with it. Doesn't seem to really make any difference to the car at all. Uh, just make sure you don't get it too high because it will uh, cook the engine and, and blow that. But other than that, it really doesn't seem to be any advantage whatsoever, uh, which is disappointing. Wheel lock and steering offset are at what I would consider my norms at 10 degrees for the wheel lock and 0 0.10 for the steering offset. Uh, the steering offset, particularly if you want the car to pull to the left less on the straightaways, if you want it to drive straighter on the straightaway, then increase this number. Just be careful that you don't get it too high because the car will actually start to pull to the right on the straightaways, and that's generally not going to be a good thing. 
Now the gear settings, there's something here that I haven't done, I don't think in any other track, but I had to do here. And that is, I generally don't change first through fourth gear. I just leave them at the default. But in this case, I changed the third gear. It was at, I believe, 1.7 or 1.8, somewhere in that range. And I lowered it to 1.4. And the reason is, with the higher number that it was using by default, you essentially skipped third gear. As soon as you went to third gear, you didn't have very many RPMs before you needed to go to fourth or uh, fourth gear. So I lowered third gear some to alleviate uh, that problem as you're coming up through the gears. Now, there's something you can do at Phoenix uh, just as you can with any of the tracks that really require a lot of change in speed, a lot of heavy braking, and you could actually try to change third gear so that you could actually use it under uh, green flag conditions, meaning that whenever you went into the corner, whenever you just before you get back to the throttle, you could swap down to third gear, use that to get more RPMs, pull you up off the corner. Now, I will tell you, that is not what this setup is about. But if you wanted to lower third gear to something closer to 1.0, to maybe something like a 1.1, you know, whatever, you get the idea. You could try to use third gear and actually shift gears uh, around this place during a lap just to give you that maybe a little bit of extra boost coming off the corner. The rear end ratio, the final drive is at 3.89. And that is not quite maximum RPMs, but it's fairly close. You get up close to 9,000 RPMs. Uh, in the cup car, particularly using that gear. Now, let's talk about the difference between this cup setup and the other setups for the other two series. Uh, in general, as I mentioned before, the shocks, the same, uh, but by all means, feel free to play around with those numbers and see what work best for you. The changes that I would make, now this setup should work just fine for the other series. If I were gonna make changes, what I would do is lower the front weight, down to around 50.0 and maybe even below that if you really want to get aggressive and help the car or truck turn. Uh, the other thing I would do is reverse the left front and right front springs, meaning that I might have for the trucks, for example, I might go 1,200 pounds on the left front and down to 1,100 pounds on the right front. Again, it's just it's up to you, but these are some ideas I'm going to throw it out there for you. And then if I come over to uh, the track bar under miscellaneous, I would generally want to increase the track bar for the other series simply because they're slower and you can be more aggressive. And I really want to help the car to rotate because that's how I'm going to get more speed since I don't quite have the horsepower and the raw speed of the cup car. And then finally, if you move to the gear settings, I would probably go something uh, closer to a 4.0, maybe even a 4.11 gear, depending on how many RPMs you really want to run. So that'll take care of the setups. Remember the lap times that I gave you, those are just guidelines. Um, I'm sure you guys are probably going to be a lot faster than me at this track. So that'll take care of the setup and track discussion. Now stay tuned for the gameplay footage, which, as I mentioned at the beginning, is the cup cars in a short, I believe, 22 lap race here at Phoenix. Thank you very much for joining me and stay tuned for more NASCAR Heat 2 coverage here at the Pit Game.
Still the bottom. Still the car out there. 